A third woman has now come forward now with allegations of improper conduct against Indiana Attorney General Curtis Hill. She's pictured there on the left side of your screen in that black and white photo and in a letter that she penned and gave to Eyewitness News. The woman writes that she was victimized at the same bar in March where the two other alleged instances of groping occurred. And that letter led the Attorney General to drop an accusation of his own. He claims his office received an email copy of the latest accuser's claims before it was sent to the media. In that email, he says the woman is asking a friend to check it for her for grammatical errors or make changes to phrases that might be needed. The AG then says in his statement that it is clear that the integrity of this investigation is compromised. The various stories appear to be coordinated and changed under the direction of others. Our political reporter Kevin Rader joins us now with the latest claims and counterclaims in the case. Kevin? John and Ann, this is just one of those days that makes you shake your head. De Silva apparently sent out that email that you guys were just talking about to get phrases, improvement on phrases, and to correct grammatical errors. The AG says now the investigation is compromised. If you've read the memo, you may know me as employee A. My real name, however, is Nikki De Silva, and I've worked for the Senate Republican Caucus for the past three years. It's the opening statement of a letter written by now the third woman to accuse Indiana's Attorney General of unwelcomed advances at AJ's bar after the conclusion of the last legislative session. She describes how she tried to step in to act as a buffer between Attorney General Hill and a friend of hers. Quote, after a few moments, Attorney General Hill put his hand on my back. I felt his hand start to slide slowly down my back. I didn't want to bring attention to his actions, so I tried to push his hand away inconspicuously using my free hand. When our hands met, instead of taking this nudge as a cue to remove his hand from my lower back, he grabbed my hand and moved both of our hands over my butt, lingering there before releasing me. End of quote. Soon afterwards, the two women, as she puts it, found an escape route and moved from the area. So one question that's being asked tonight is why didn't they come forward then? Why did it take four months before all this surfaced? We'll explore that on Eyewitness News at 6. John and Ann? All right. Thank you very much. Then Kevin Ray reporting live for us tonight. Now, the Silva is the third woman from the memo to come forward publicly. The first to break her silence was State Representative Mara Candelaria Reardon, who shared her story and accusations against Hill in an op-ed published in the Northwest Indiana Times. She says she was speaking out, quote, to support the other victims of the Attorney General, Curtis Hill, who have not yet found their voice. Now, shortly after that, Indiana State Democrats Communication Director Gabrielle McLemore told a similar story to the Associated Press. She says, quote, for Hill to deny it again and again is so frustrating. If my story can help other women feel like they don't have to hide, that they don't have to feel like they did before something was wrong, that's my goal. Now, to check out all of our previous stories on the Curtis Hill investigation, just head to our website, WTHR.com.